Salve, benvenuti a questo Hello and welcome to another episode of Space. You've probably used an app on your mobile phone to get the weather forecast. Now, thanks to a satellite network and ground based stations such as this truck, it's possible to get through an app on your phone information about pollution in your cities. The University of Bremen in Germany is collecting different kinds of data in order to obtain a general picture of the pollution in the atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere is a complicated system, influenced by a large number of factors. Observation satellites orbiting around our planet constantly monitor the state of the air we breathe and how natural and man-made pollution are affecting the quality of the atmosphere. Researchers at the University of Bremen have pioneered the measurement of atmospheric pollution. Measurements from space are essential because they provide us with the global picture or from the local to the global scale to tell us what the meteorology and, and atmospheric chemistry are doing to our emissions. The wind systems are moving the air around. At certain times of the year, as Europe is venting to the pristine regions of the Arctic. Similarly, we in Europe receive in summer often pollution coming from America. We have to understand the sources, the so-called surface fluxes, the emissions, and we have to also understand the atmospheric chemistry and physics which enables the pollution to be sent around the globe. To detect every piece of the chemical puzzle composing our atmosphere, scientists work with data collected by spectrometers, aerosol analysis and satellite measurements, as with the ones coming from the Earth Observation Copernicus program. In the Bremen Observatory above the university roof, the sunlight is decomposed into its basic radiation and analyzed to find trace of pollutants. You can say every molecule has its fingerprint in the spectrum. There are millions of lines, so there's an enormous amount of information in it. And these lines now, in this case, can be attributed to CO2. So it's the CO2 in the atmosphere, which is absorbing the solar sunlight. This truck is a mobile measurement station. It helps detect the footprints of smog and industrial emissions which affect the air quality. Methane and CO2 are the greenhouse gases driving global climate change and they are strongly linked to human activity. But to have the wide picture, it's crucial to distinguish between man-made and natural pollution. This truck uh, provides a unique set of uh, different instruments. So on one hand, we have instruments uh, which are sucking in just air around us, which means that we are able to uh, um, analyze the air for pollutants. On the other hand, we have uh, remote sensing instruments uh, using more or less the same type of uh, analyzers as the space-borne instruments. In the coming months, the Bremen researchers are launching a further initiative to investigate the impact of major pollution centers on air quality at a local and regional scale by dedicated airborne campaigns. This carbon dioxide and methane mission will provide new data in order to support the validation of satellite measurements. We are doing two intensive airborne measurement campaigns where we get uh, kind of snapshots of the chemistry of these outflows. And in the analysis, we combine this with satellite data to understand how the uh, uh, chemical evolution of the outflows from megacities. Once the air pollution detectives have gathered all the evidence, they must process this huge amount of data. That final step requires complex algorithms and IT infrastructures to get a coherence between measurements from the observation satellite network and the different sensors on Earth. This is the base to build a tool to forecast pollution. The satellite gives these beautiful maps, but you can only use them really if you have a validation measurement to compare to, and this needs to be a very good measurement, and this needs to be taken on the ground. Once you have launched the satellite, it's out of your hands, and you cannot bring it to the lab and double check and test it. It's there, and you need to trust the data, and the only way to get this Confidence in the data is by comparison to other measurements. The increase of greenhouse gases has changed the Earth's energy balance and accelerated the climate change process. The impact on global warming has revealed the vulnerability of the planet's ecosystem. 
that makes scientific studies fundamental for our ability to cope with high-impact weather events and establishing suitable policies. Mankind has a large influence on the climate and the problem is everything what we are doing now has very long time scales. We have to make now decisions so that we can see the results in 50 years or even maybe later. We need better information and better quality information in order to be able to provide the right mechanisms and the best possible uh, models for prediction of human impact and natural phenomena. As we've seen in Europe, the improvement of air quality, and this is certainly a result of, of policy. Uh, it shows that people can do it, governments can do it, but we've got a long way to go. When it is launched, ESA's satellite Sentinel-5 precursor will provide high-level measurements on the Earth's atmosphere, surpassing the performances of current in-orbit instruments. It will boost the quality of data gathering and enable researchers to optimize their models. From atmospheric pollution to space now, with a new episode in the Legends of Space series. On April 6, 1965, the first commercial communications satellite, Early Bird, was launched into orbit. Let's have a look into the archives. Early Bird was the very first commercial communications satellite placed in geostationary orbit. It was launched in April 1965 on a Delta D rocket from Cape Canaveral. It will be sent to the Andover Earth Station for transmission to the spacecraft. It was capable only of transmitting uh, uh, one TV channel and uh, or some equivalent telephone uh, conversations, but uh, it was the, the first, the precursor. When the third stage separates, Early Bird when Early Bird was launched, I was 10 years old, and I was quite passionate about seeing all the newspaper articles that described this first commercial satellite. For the first time in the history of satellite telecoms, we had the notion of orbital position, so 28 degrees west, where Early Bird was positioned, with which the antennas could communicate permanently. Les antennes pouvaient communiquer de façon permanente. It was very important for the industry. It nearly doubled the number of voice circuits available between Europe and the United States. And remember that at the time, if you wanted to make an international phone call, you really had to make an appointment with the switchboard operator first. A man-made satellite of Earth is being put into commercial service as a means of communication between continents. That's all for now, but you can watch all the episodes of Space and Legends of Space on Euronews.com. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye.